Well, the Word of God says that we are to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, and I know that many of you constantly pray for the people of Israel, uh, for the work of the gospel that's going on in that land, and especially in light of the crisis that's happening in the land of Israel. We have a guest with us today that's very well connected with what's going on there. He's a resident of Israel and head of the ministry, Maoz Israel. His name is Kobe Ferguson, and he's with us here this morning on the Stand Radio. Good morning, Kobe. Hey, shalom, shalom. Welcome to be here. Good to have you with us. Um, tell us why you are in the States. You, you, There was a rally here locally. Tell us what was happening. Yeah, we've been traveling, uh, myself and others on our team to speak about what's happening in Israel, what happened on October 7th, let people know really kind of the depth of the atrocities and, and, and the difficulties we've been going through, but also to give a little bit of hope to Christians who love Israel and been supporting Israel, let them know that the Lord is not uh, asleep. He, he was not caught off guard, even though we're going through really the darkest season we have in our modern history. But mm. The Lord is doing great things, and he's using Christians and using his body in Israel to actually impact the land during this hard, difficult time. Yeah. Maoz Israel, that's not a word that we would use a lot. Maoz, it's a Hebrew word, and what does that mean? So Maoz is a Hebrew word which means strength, also means fortress. Uh, Israelis would recognize it as a very common word especially in some songs and uh, literature and um, the Jewish culture uh, comes from the scripture that means the Lord is my strength. Mm -hmm. So we know that ultimately all of our strength comes from him. But as a, the name of the organization uh, we took that my in-laws started almost 50 years ago mm -hmm. and they founded one of the first messianic organizations. So Jews who believe in Yeshua believe in Jesus and it's been our vision for all this time is to make Israel strong in the Lord, and uh, in particular through the gospel. So that ministry has been going on a very, very long time, and it's a multifaceted ministry. I spent some time on your website. You guys are doing a lot uh, in, in Israel right now. Just give us a 30,000-foot view of the ministry of Maoz Israel. I mean, when you're dealing with organizations that have been around, kind of like the AFA, yeah, you know, for yeah. so long, it's, yeah. it's a lot to say. But we really are, simply put, doing whatever we can to see Israel learn about Yeshua the good news of Yeshua and uh, be strengthened. We do a lot of humanitarian outreach, a lot mm -hmm. of uh, literature we publish. We started a publishing department to translate materials into Hebrews. We realized there were very little, and still, uh, comparatively speaking to other countries, very little in Hebrew. So we're helping publish Bibles with our friends at the Israel Bible Society. So we do a lot to get materials and resources out to disciple and to equip the body in Israel, we believe that a strong body is the best witness mm -hmm. to the land of Israel. So a lot of what we do is to strengthen the body of believers in Israel and to be a shining light and that city on a hill to the entire nation of Israel, publishing materials, also yeah. uh, recording music and, and a lot of outreach through media. And, yeah. and, and during this war, we had to pivot and do a lot of things differently. So our vision stayed the same, even though we're in a, a complete time of war and devastation. We said, what can we do to help? So half of our team had to be called up to immediately uh, fight and serve in the military. All of our team are Israeli citizens in Israel. My, I myself, is, I'm, I'm an Israeli citizen, and I went and volunteered with the IDF as well. Mm -hmm. And so we did everything we could to help, especially the soldiers in the very beginning, because over 360,000 were called up immediately. So that created a real strain on the system. So I went and, and told different Army bases, look, our organization wants to serve, and we want to partner with you. Okay, good. And so that's what we did. There were, I mean, basic things like water and food and shoes and, and bulletproof jackets and, mm -hmm. and whatever we could get a hold of. And we were able to really, because of the prayers and the financial backing, because of Christians around the world responded to the needs. We saw things that we've never been able to see. We even helped start a school. Wow. And we started seeing there's so many needs of the evacuees. So that's something that a lot of people don't realize. Hundreds of thousands of Israelis had to evacuate 
into safer areas. So they've been living in hotels and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and just makeshift places. And so during that time, we said, what can we do to help these evacuees? And one of the mayors of a city said, well, you know, kind of tongue in cheek, can you help us build a school? We have so many sur- kids that survive October 7th here in, in this particular city. And, and we just said, look, let's step out in faith and do it. And partners helped, stepped up, and we finished that school. I think it took less than two months to finish. And so these are just – and we've never done things on that kind of level. So during the most difficult seasons, we've seen kind of the biggest shining light in the dark places. Mm. Kobe, when you think of the history of Israel and those those particular dates and years that are so significant, May of 1948, the establishment of the State of Israel, you have the Six-Day War, you have so many events, but October the 7th, 2023 – is such an incredible monumental date in the history, not only of Israel, I think in the history of the world. Can you give us a sense of what is going on in the hearts and the minds of the people of Israel in this war? Uh, And as we're recording this, it's August the 5th. So by the time this airs, we don't know what's going to happen. But give us a sense of what's going on in the hearts and minds of the Israelis. Well, we'll back up to October 7th, 2023. This was a date, as you said, that will remain in infamy. Yeah. This was our September 11th. You know, if you take the comparative size of Israel to the U.S., it's as if 50,000 or more people died in the Twin Towers and died in the Pentagon and the different attacks of September 11th. So uh, that's huge. It's a 7.2 million Jewish people, total population 10 million in Israel, a very small country in comparison to others like the U.S. So everyone in the country has been impacted from the guy who sells bread down the street. We go to try there, go there to get bread. And his grandfather's back from retirement working. He told me all the kids are at war. Mm -hmm. So, wow. Okay. So my principal, my, of my daughter's school had to go fight. Nobody leave the school right now. And so forth and so on. So it's affected us in a a very deep way, very personal way. My own daughter serving and I have three daughters. My second daughter being recruited and going in her future to serve as well. And so it's it's impacted the entire country. And I think people are becoming now that we fast forward to over nine months later in the war. There's a fatigue. It's it's difficult. They're trying to switch up and and bring in fresh troops and give people time off. But it's very difficult back home. You know, you have the war front and then you have the home front. And the home front is also suffering and people, I think, are willing to stand together. But it's definitely been extremely, extremely difficult. How have you seen um, the hearts of the average Israeli affected spiritually as a result of this? Because we know the Word of God says that not only will there be a regathering from the four corners of the earth into the land, but God will also provoke them to jealousy. So what's going on spiritually right now in the, in the hearts of the people? I can only talk about those things which I've been yeah. seeing. And as we really began to just help in very practical ways, okay. people began to ask us very simply, who are you? Mm-hmm. And what they meant was, who are I've heard of Messianic Jews. Some of them had never heard of us. What do you guys believe? And actually, some of the statements that we heard the most frequently are, aren't you guys a cult? <laughs> yeah, like, well, yeah. You know, if we were, we wouldn't know it. You know, what do you mean? <laughs> you know, and then my wife, who's a very, uh, um, we'll just say, a, a very strong woman. Okay. She told one of the leaders she said, that asked her that. She said, well, maybe you're in the cult, you know. Yeah. And he began to laugh. He said, okay, I get your point. Like, let's she, – she she said, look, we've come to serve, come to help, come to help you build the school, for example, that she was – she spearheaded that whole project. And, and the mayor told her, he said, he said, I give you a promise and a commitment. I will never call you a cult again. And what that means is there's a narrative that's changing. Uh, Israeli Messianic Jews have been considered uh, kind of persona non grata. There's been some persecution. We're considered, uh, I I tell people that in the U.S. they might relate to this. You know, we weren't allowed to play in other reindeer games, you know. Yeah, wow. (laughs) It's like, you know, we've got projects going on here. You guys are are odd. You're, You're 
traitors to your own people. So mm-hmm. we've been considered uh, because of their lack of understanding and sure. misunderstanding of you know Jewish history with the Christians and the Christian anti-Semitism of centuries. But we tell them no, things are changing. And we're Jewish, we're Israeli, we're citizens just like you. And they're realizing as a lot of our soldiers are serving, a lot of Messianic Jews are in the military and actually have given their lives as an ultimate sacrifice to protect the country. So their eyes are being opened to us, which I am realizing that's eventually opening their eyes to him. That's that's so exciting. Tell us how we can pray and how we can help with the work that is going on in the nation. Well, as we were sharing in our devotion time with the team today, right, we were talking yeah. about a renewing of strength. Uh, Israel's not really built for long-term war. If you look historically in the Six-Day War, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. about yeah. the extent of, yeah. you know, we talk about months and months and months of a, of a prolonged multi-front war, it, it, it gets it gets intense and it gets very tough for all involved. So really pray for the entire nation to stay in unity, and that's beyond politics. It's, it's yeah. something uh, that the Lord can really only do, but there's that we would be in unity even though we are different, have different thoughts and opinions of politics and governmental views and things, but just a real unity from the Lord. And for the believers in the land to have continued opportunities to, to just sow into um, this harvest field, to be a light in the darkness, and that our families would be strong. Because if the enemy can come and divide, is uh, sadly, that's what happens often during pressure. Things can either bond together, like a diamond can be created, or things break when they're under pressure. Mm-hmm. So during these seasons, I'm believing that our faith will emerge as having been tested by fire and that the Lord will cause a lot of our his body because we have a growing body of believers in Israel, probably thousands and thousands of believers. Some say maybe 10, 20,000. That's a huge so, change from years ago. Oh, it's it's amazing. Even yeah. the years I've been in Israel most of my life now yeah. and things are have been growing, sometimes it's a, a real slow growth. Yeah. But... That's what we want to believe for in the midst. If we're we're going to suffer, we're going to go through such seasons. It's like, let it, let it count for something. Mm. Let the Lord get something out of this. His sacrifice is worthy for, and that eyes would be open to their Messiah. And that we would see supernatural miracles and protection. Uh, My own daughter serving very close to the action. Uh, the, The listeners can please pray for her. For Kobe's daughter, the Lord knows who she is, if you say Kobe's daughter. Yeah. And she's very close to the action. That's all I can say about, about her position. But there's, um, I think it's really good to connect also with believers in the land because it's good to get information that you can trust. I know AFR is, is a very trusted source as well. And so I just uh, we appreciate the prayers. And I, I just want to encourage people because sometimes you pray. It's like, is anything happening? Mm-hmm. And I'm an eyewitness. I can tell all those who are out there that are praying that things are happening when you pray for Israel. The Lord is listening and he acts. Uh, people will want to follow the ministry. So where do they go to find out more about Kobe Ferguson and Maoz Israel? I think it's easier for people to go to IsraelNeedsMe.com. It's a, a link that we set up to Point people to the ministry. It's easy to remember. Yeah. Israelneedsme.com. Israelneedsme.com. Kobe Ferguson, our guest today. Kobe, thank you for uh, for being here with us, for your work. And uh, boy, our hearts just resonate with what you're doing. We love the nation of Israel. Uh, we know that God is zealous for his people there. And we pray that God will continue to take those seeds and that water that you're pouring and will produce much, much fruit. Shalom, shalom. Thank you. 